Day number one still rages on here at DreamHack Montreal, where we just concluded our second series of the day and now approaching our third. We were watching NRG finding a victory in that last series there once more over the Chiefs, and though it did go in NRG's favor, still got a pretty good performance there out of the Chiefs. Yeah. Yeah, and now the Chiefs are looking at either TSM or 1NE, so it could be a tough matchup for them to make day two. They probably weren't expecting a very likely yeah. TSM down there, so so if that match does happen, that's going to be very And they're definitely not playing rough at all. I thought Hawk had a great showing, definitely being consistent there, and like I heard James about saying in the cast that he wasn't hesitating a lot, mm -hmm. and that is so crucial, especially coming in as the new guy and the younger player especially. That is so hard and difficult to deal with the pressure. He did great. Chiefs are still looking strong to me. Yeah, and I'm excited to be able to see them and again not all of our international performers here at this event because for those of you who maybe didn't catch the top of show here this is the most international tournament that rocky league has yeah. ever seen here to date but it still seems like north america and europe for now kind of have a grip on that competition uh yeah we saw that uh, at the world championship where both oc and sam they had two representatives each but none of them made it to the bracket stage and it looks like it might be na and europe show for the rest of 2019 yeah. and now obviously teams like the chiefs or teams like lotus want to change that but we haven't seen it yet yeah and you still got to believe in one any the first representation from asia it's so important of a tournament and also with the coaches adding that kind of factor in here is amazing being able to have something behind you to calm you down i'm just excited to see how these coaches make a difference in these teams yeah and we'll be keeping track of the difference that they make here through their results so let's go ahead and take a glance at the groups themselves and figure out what we have gotten so far here not only on stream but maybe off stream yeah, the surprising one was, again, uh, TSM dropping down into the lowers. Uh, but they did get a win, it looks like. So they are one and one. They will play the Chiefs. So one of those two teams is going home on day one. Yeah, and Lotus coming out strong as well. A lot of people underestimate Sam and their capabilities, but we saw it at the World Championship. They have great mechanics, and they represent their team and their, their region, Lotus, super well, especially here so far, getting that first win. Yeah, 3-0 sweep over a team of Afterthought that are favorites to make the rival yeah. series, so that's a big win. Yeah, really cool to be able to see that. And again, some of the success out of teams like Reciprocity, our most recent DreamHack victor, and the fact that they are not under the title of PSG anymore, mm -hmm. transitioning over. Just exciting to know that they have come out day number one and they go, we're dominant, right? Yeah. We get the 2-0 victory and setting that tone that, again, we know we can't expect every team here to have the results that we want maybe from them. And so it's nice to see that out of a champion. Yeah, yeah. we just want to see consistency. And of course, it's back-to-back -back grand finals for them. But it's these two tournaments that are like, a little bit in the off season. Obviously, the World Championship didn't go their way. They lost in the quarterfinals, but they've gone over that hump of never finishing top four with these back-to-back -back results. And our next series at hand here is going to be between Rogue and Complexity. Yeah. And I feel like it's pretty interesting, at least when I look especially of that of Rogue and some of the success or lack thereof at certain moments throughout the entirety of this career post Kronovi, right? And so I want to hear some insight from both of you as to maybe what we can expect from them, knowing that they're prepping for next season yeah. of RLCS. Honestly, I have no idea what to yeah. say about Rogue at this point because they probably shouldn't have made the World Championship then there is no way that anyone had them as a top four team, but it's because Wonder played out of his mind. Yeah. And we saw when they went to be on the summit, there was a pickup team thing where you get drafted to teams. Wonder was picked dead last, 24th. There's a reason for that, because people don't think Wonder is as exactly. good as everyone else there. So when he doesn't play up to par, so far we've seen that throughout the offseason where they don't have great results at Dream Act yeah. and beyond the summit, then they can struggle. Yeah, Wonder is the X factor. And to me, it seems like, <clears throat> excuse me, that these teams, both of them, we have complexity is starting to, you know, get on fire. They're starting to catch some kind of momentum. And then we have Rogue, who seems like they're steaming off. They're slowly trying to fall back under our radar. And I see, I feel like the, the, we've seen them a lot, you know, the past few tournaments. We've seen them a bunch, but we haven't seen that peak performance Rogue that we saw at the World Championship and in League Play leading, leading up to that. So we have one team that's exponentially increasing and one that's just falling back down. And I, I would raise to this falling down approach that we do kind of pose here for Rogue. Is there an argument to be made that they are comfortable to play up to the circumstances at hand? Is that an element just based on the fact that they shouldn't have made Worlds, but then they outperform themselves there then when the pressure dissipates so it's, do they yeah it's possible but at dreamhack they haven't had the greatest results and you True. want them here but complexity is a very interesting story because obviously they've had some great results they finished top four at the last dreamhack and then top eight right before that but flakes 
he wanted to make some moves, right? So he goes to Magnus like, hey, I either want to look for another team or maybe we try and kick Greasy. Magnus was like, hey, I don't like this idea. If you want to look somewhere else, go ahead. Yeah. So for a little while there, it looks like Flakes was going to be off complexity, but he's back on the team now because they felt like that was the best for all three of these players. Now it's just getting over that hump, right? Yeah. Like getting over that drama of with Greasy and Flakes yeah. mostly, but you hope like a coach like Snasky exactly. can kind of help that out. Yeah, I was about to say, Snasky, you know, adding, especially after that, what you talked about, Gibbs, Flakes is the main star, the guy that you want to keep happy in this team. Hopefully Snasky right now can help add to that atmosphere. But on the other side, we have Rogue trying to do the exact same thing. We got Sizz in the background as well, using that coach mentality. And Kronovi, the leader of this group, the guy who has made a difference and brought Rogue back to the top. Yeah, and everyone was starting to count out Kronovi. He gets kicked from G2, but what does he do? He makes it to the World Championship. Anyway, he does fall to G2, but still, he makes it back. Then even Epi on the summit's like, oh, he's playing 1v1s versus Fairy Peak. This isn't gonna go well, but he yeah. goes and beats Fairy Peak. Like, Kronovi <laughs> can win when no one expects him to, so maybe that'll happen here again. Yeah, it's a really good point that you bring up, and I think it's also super interesting outside of maybe some of those most recent results from Kenobi that the recent tail and success at those moments for Rogue has been heavily looked at him of, was he an angel kind of fallen from good graces? And quickly everybody goes, no, this man is still yeah. the mountain. We still, it's the Kenobi that we've always known and loved, and he is a very, very formidable opponent. But then, you know, Rogue doesn't look as good. So then it's like, was it really Kronovi, right? And so I think that has been closed now, yeah. but there has been such an interesting approach to how good is Kronovi, I think, from an outsider standpoint, looking in. And now for both these teams, too, it's like, how good are you? Mm -hmm. Like, Complexity, they're the ninth seed. Rogue is the number seven seed. So one of these teams, whoever wins this, they are on the track on day two to make day three. So it's going to really help them along by grabbing that uh, number seven seed. Yeah. So this is a very important game for seeding purposes going into day two. And, you know, you, you raise the point that we're losing the momentum on the side of Rogue, but we're also gaining it debatably exponentially on the side of cognitive or complexity, excuse me. Yeah. And when I think of complexity, and you guys can tell me this is a little bit too harsh, they're the best team that I struggle to think of when I think of the best teams. Uh, they are so darn good, but they're never the first one that comes to mind. They are gaining that momentum and gaining respect, I think, across the board. But if you ask me to yeah. list great Rocket League teams, I, I, I just... They're missing for, I think for some you reason. You haven't seen them enough. We've yeah. seen Rogue so much, especially over the past few months in tournaments. And right now, DreamHack is the main place where complexity can shine. And they have outshined Rogue every single time right now in this matchup. So it, it's hard to tell whenever Rogue is slowly falling and complexity is yeah. rising, but we haven't seen them enough. But this could be the best thing for complexity now. Now they're in the RLCS. Yeah. That's why you haven't seen them, because they were in the Rival Series. Yeah. They got promoted. But honestly, they are right on that border and of like a number four European team. Yeah. Exactly. And so this is, uh, I guess, how good of a check mark, you know, if they find good success here against Rogue, let's assume like they walk out with a dominant 3-0, uh, you know, as a benchmark towards the rest of the competition at hand for their future. Like, yeah. is it is it a very good sign or is it maybe not too credible? Uh, well, I think it's going to come down to day two because you'll have a lot more close games. And I do want to see them when they play against yeah. the European opposition. But teams like TSM, who I thought was going to look extremely strong, they're not looking great on day number one. So I think complexity right now, like um, if I had to uh, predict world championship teams, they would be there. Really? You think yeah. so? You think they make a Barcelona run? Because that's what they remind me of. They remind me of a Barcelona team who's coming from the rival series, exploding back on and going into the RLCS. Greasy Meister, a player who's so experienced and a veteran as well as Magnus trying to bring on this new player, Flakes. I think they're going to make a run, like you said, all the way to the top. They're on fire. But Rogue, if Wonder steps up, it's going to be so close. So then what are what are those elements? Let's really try and get on the field here with Wonder specifically, I feel like here, because if so much hinges on one individual, and yeah. I think that this is not the only roster we can say this for. We almost just got done concluding how Justin can have that same impact with NRG, right? So what can we do for those players that have an almost make or break impact for a roster what can we do to better their success and make consistency from their performance levels? so i think for rogue it's a little bit different where with justin you need him to make those solo plays rogue doesn't need that necessarily yeah. they need all three to be involved in the passing games mm -hmm. i think rogue really excels but they don't have that like individual star maybe aj at times maybe kenobi once in a while but they just need all three to be on the same page. So they need Wonder, like in game number one, to get some quality passes in, and then we'll see if that continues throughout the yeah. series. And it's the communication side. I think the previous tournaments I've watched with Rogue and their play, Wonder is not doing the best when he has no trust on the field. And you can tell. I don't know if it's either he doesn't trust himself yeah. or he doesn't trust his teammates. And a lot of times when he's trying to, you know, clear the ball or maybe he's transitioning back to defense, he'll instead go for extra hits and not trust his teammates to be rotating in. And I think Wonder, he just needs to leave the ball, have trust in Cronovia or AJ rotating in, and, you know, be able to be complacent and in the backfield. 
Well, with that, I am going to ask you guys to pose if you think Wonder will have that trust and that impact that is necessary here for Rogue, or is the momentum being gained by Complexity too much to be able to handle? So I don't know if Complexity, like, if they still have that momentum, exactly. right? Because of all that drama that happened. Okay. I don't know exactly where it is right now. But one thing I know is that Greasy is a very calm individual, and I don't think that drama will get to him, yeah. and I think he can forgive and forget. I have complexity here because I think the individual superstar plays by Flakes okay. will be the difference maker here, so I got complexity. Okay. Yeah. I, this is this is hard because they're both at the same area right now, and one's on the fall and one's on the rise, but I just think that complexity has not had back-to-back -back you know, momentum. It's been a while. It's been pauses and gaps in between where they're playing. Like you said, they have had issues. They might not have been practicing as much, while Rogue have probably been figuring out why they're kind of on a little bit of a decrease right now. I think Rogue are going to step up this tournament where they need to and show us what they have going into world. So my question for you, Turtle, is when you made the world championship, what was your team? Was it Rogue? Pretty sure it was Rogue. Yes. Okay, okay. Maybe a little bias coming out, but that's all right. All right, just a skosh. <laughs> Look. Just a skosh. <laughs> what? Maybe Defend maybe yourself. Look, okay, Gibbs, which team did you make Worlds on? I've been to seven Worlds, okay? Okay, you're I, right. I've been to seven. I've been to all seven, all right? Uh, what Worlds me? did I make it on? It's okay. That's right. Flat none, boys. <laughs> yeah. Been the three dream hacks. Yeah. Four now. Yeah, look at me. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is difficult. Uh, I will yeah. say... You guys make a darn good argument for complexity, but I it's Kronovi. It is the hill I will die on for this argument. It is very difficult to believe that they can overcome a guy who can just win if he feels like he chooses yeah. to do so. <laughs> Kronovi is, at least in my mind, that same win factor that we get out of Turbo, out of the European region. It's when he mat when he wants it to be that way, he can somehow manifest destiny. It should be extremely close. So like these teams are obviously seated very close to one another and again whoever wins this they are on the road to day three already yeah i mean i'm, I'm looking at monis too the last dream hack i saw him feed flakes perfectly he had a backwards pass specifically i remember just perfect passing and being able to have the vision on the field for flakes setting up flakes is what you need to do here for complexity so here we're going a little bit deeper here because we have a couple of minutes before we're getting into this is yeah. uh, i just want to hear maybe let's go with the same prediction aspect but get some more depth not just justification but i want to go series result from coming out from you these are not going to be documented on their behalf but i want to i want maybe a series, <laughs> series weight result. right okay. into into and and I, I want a little bit more maybe the one player the make or break for both yeah. arguments here so or excuse me gibbs you first First here. Uh, so make or break, I am definitely going wonder like out of these yeah. players, and I think it will be break, and that's why I don't have Rogue winning this. I feel like wonder is a little bit outclassed right now compared to everyone else on the field, but who knows? Because again, he's not working anymore, he's not in school anymore, he's been full time Rocket League lately. We'll see if he can improve, but yeah. I just haven't seen that improvement yet, so that's why I have him as a breaker. See, I agree, but I also have a different opinion because I feel like wonder he needs to hit a certain bar, a certain ex expectation, right? And it's not that difficult because with players like Justin, we have somebody who needs to, you know, create all these crazy wacky plays off the wall, get these double touches, these air dribbles. But with Wonder, he just needs to have confidence and solid rotations in the backfield and just do what he does best. It's not a super high up bar that he needs to hit. It's something that I feel like just is he, as long as he gets his nerves under control, he said, I think he's going to make it. I don't think he's going to break it. I think Rogue are going to take it. Oh my. <laughs> and you wonder why he was a hip hop artist wow. before. Uh, but no, anyways, <laughs> uh, I do want to. I also asked for a series number. I didn't get that from yeah, either one of you. So, 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 so all I heard is you I want the far, <laughs> like the fine numbers, and both of you are like, how can I skirt around this as easy as possible? Uh, you know, we got I'll, the make, we got the break, but what is the digits? I don't know. I'm going 3 1 here. I'm going 3 1 for complexity. Ooh. Like, I think it'll be somewhat close, but I don't think we're going to five games. I'm going 3 1 for Rogue. Okay. I'm going the opposite. 3 1 Rogue. It's almost like 3 1 is the easiest answer to give because it gives one be. ounce of forgiveness in the opposite direction, okay, but still sitting in favor of your mentality. That you want? So there we go. That That's what I like. Some rogue. spice so in here. here. It's 3 0 because I have an opinion. <laughs> So when you, you talk about spice, <laughs> you just go in with the wild card. <laughs> yeah. That's that's how it's going to be. All right, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we are done talking. We have the series ready. We are going to go ahead and bring in our commentary crew, and we got a bit of a mix-up here. It is going to be Johnny Boy and Shogun. Guys, how you doing? Yeah, it's doing pretty good. Thank you, Dreadnought. We're excited to get started casting here. I mean, day one already, as usual, plenty of upsets, so loving to see that. But this one, we expect these teams to be here, and it's hard to pick one. Uh, to win it, to be honest. Yeah, we've seen some absolutely crazy losses. I mean, Mao's losing to GC Aura. Yeah. Uh, we've got TSM losing. We've got Gibbs. 
<laughs> to uh, Mr. <laughs> Isaac Come on, Joe, go. Go We had the great debate of the make or break here, and I needed a conclusion. So let's go ahead and get this thing underway. <laughs> Right, well, certainly is an interesting point. The desk was pretty much saying, like, they, mm. they saw two teams going in different directions, but there was a universal thing that they did agree upon, which was, we haven't seen enough of them recently. It's true. This is a proving opportunity for both of these teams to make a statement heading through not only to this tournament, but for the rest of the year. They haven't played before, if I'm not mistaken. No. Uh, Rogue versus Complexity. If I'm, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, this is the first time that they've matched up, which is actually quite surprising to me. I'm, I'm amazed they haven't run into each other at any of the other DreamHack events this year. I mean, Rogue's DreamHack record this year has uh, not exactly been stellar. They were a team that Really, when they came together, mm. no one expected much, and during the offseason, they seemed to deliver even less. But mm. there seemed to be a point during last season that it just switched. And ever since then, been a lot more impressive a team, and they're a team that can really take a scalp. Oh, yeah. I mean, Rogue, they've had some pretty big results. Uh, pretty much all the DreamHacks this year, they've, they've taken um, at least one good team down, but then they've fallen shortly afterwards so you think oh okay hold on maybe they're gonna make a run here oh no they just they lost in the lower bracket never mind they're out complexity going steadily better and better they can't, if, you know in order to get a better result than they did get a valencia they need to make the grand finals at this dream hack let's see if they can make it happen nice save by kernovi early on that was against flakes as well gonna be starting off with a lot of pressure coming out from complexity as they look to try and lock down the rotation starting over in the orange side of the field Flakes drops down, and Mognus chooses better than to move forward. Oh, he's one of those players that has been on top of the scene for so long now. One of the best rotational players that we've got around. Although AJ going to go the entire lane for the pitch. Oh. And Isaac App wow. might be 100% correct. Wow, that's interesting. So not only have we got AJ air dribbling onto Flakes here, but Wonder as well. Just in there, annoying Flakes. I don't think he got any contact uh, by looks of things, but... That's at least something else that Flakes has to think about when he's jumping up for the save. Listen, Johnny, you don't have to try and save that one, okay? Getting names wrong is not to be new to me. <laughs> Boy, AJ starting off absolutely phenomenally. And this one is... AJ tries to get rid. Greasy. Off that one up high, but Kronovi taking his time. The question coming into this game is how much of Kronovi's soul did he sell? to get that win over Fairy Peak over Beyond the Summit? That is a really good question. I mean, that's another matchup I'd love to see happen this weekend. Get Rogue versus Vitality at some point. Now, whoever does lose this match are not out, of course. They're going to be straight into lower round two with a match against Afterthought. Um, the winner of that will progress on. Oh my goodness, how is this not gone in? Magnus actually had a flip, but he's missed it. Beaten to the ball by Rogue, who somehow do not concede. Oh, AJ, he's done the exact what? same thing! AJ is ripping complexity in two! Just look at his face as well in the bottom corner. He's just chilling out. No big deal. Flip reset for the finish. 2-0, both AJ solo straight down the middle. And you brought up the point that after four are waiting in the lower bracket. It's a match that Rogue would rather not have. They did lose to after four in the closed qualifiers for this very event. Yeah, Afterthought were coming in as one of the teams that we're all looking at, thinking they're going to be just making a steamroll run into day two, but lost already to Lotus. I'm super excited about seeing on stream later um, today. First, we've got to get this one done. Complexity versus Rogue. So far, Rogue are looking great. I mean, it's just AJ. Just give him the ball. Let's see if he can do it again. Got to go straight down the middle. AJ can just stuff that. A lot of challenges, not really going much of anywhere, but AJ's up on the wall and I mean it's time to hit the panic button if you are on complexity <laughs> because he seems to be getting something every single time. Even if that one doesn't go on target, it just seems to be a get out of jail free card every single time Rogue are stuck on defense. Yeah, he's just carrying the ball straight over the top and he doesn't look vulnerable while he's doing it. There's always a chance that he could just 50-50 the ball, the worst case scenario. And if that's your worst case scenario, you're in a pretty good scenario. Good news as well for the rest of Rogue is that, you know, air dribbles aren't exactly the quickest plays in the world. Gives you so much time to get your boost back up, get yourself into a good position. Sometimes it just doesn't matter what position or how much boost you've got because AJ's scoring anyway, but let's just say he doesn't score, you're still in a good spot. You know, it's up, up until, I think, BTS, just uh, last month, the the Summit Rocket League, we didn't see Rogue, you know, beat any really, really big teams. But then, of course, they did beat Bricks. That's a nice bump. Kronovi can't get the save. Flakes to the finish. And it was more interference ahead. 
that created this one greasy with a run onto Crow. He's just flown over and prevented him from jumping. Really, would, I'm sure, but I'd love to jump up a bit sooner for that. As well, Flakes just delaying it a second. It's a typical sort of one that you'd like to lash out at immediately. Instead, puts it right behind the American. Now, Kronobi. Rogue's lead halved after that play. Now, Mognus. Puts it up again, Greasy. He was thinking about it. Instead, decides to leave, and that is well positioned to try and keep that pressure going. But patient so far from complexity. They've got time on the clock. Nice interception by Crow. Greasy trying to snipe that shot underneath him. Rogue are on pretty low boost right now. They're not able to move off and attack this ball very quickly. Crow just reaches it in time to prevent the shot. Wonder's done a good thing here. So just slowing down the play ever so slightly to give his team more time to get involved. Flakes flip reset. It's dropped down. And somehow Greasy's put it wide. He really needs to be hitting the target there. Test the goalkeeper at the bare minimum. He's got another chance. And he will make up for the previous misplay. Yeah, Rogue looked like they were just getting away with one. After the poor touch to put into Greasy's path. But this one, however, cannot be saved. AJ always second best to that one. And now... Two AJ Wonder plays mm. have been resorted to worth nothing. And don't be point. confused with AJ Wonder play. You mean Wonder. Uh, it is not as good as the Wonder Thunder yeah. combo. I do miss no. that. <laughs> no, not quite as good. Yeah, we didn't see any assists on, except maybe Kronobi running ahead and looking for a bump onto um, Flakes as AJ was air dribbling towards it. But apart from that, it was all AJ. And the Rogue haven't been able to create any other chances outside of those. Be a problem. Complexity. Continue to dominate the territory. That's a double commit, though. It's not open thanks to Flakes. First in the final 30 seconds. Still all tied up. Now here comes Wonder. Double touch off the ceiling. Saved by Greasy. Uh, it wasn't a flip reset. Can't score those, mate. Yeah, need to be resetting flips on every takeoff. Of course, At least days. two. I don't know, have you ever seen a double flip reset goal in uh, competitive Rocket League? I don't remember I've, any myself. We've seen one come... I do not remember the game, but we've seen one come very close. Yeah, really, that's something I would love to... So, so I don't care how much money is on the line, you just let it in. Come on. Who would it be if somebody's going to do that? Who would you have your money on? Pulling out the double flip reset. Don't go for the double flip reset. Yeah, who's going to be the first person to do it? Oh. On the short, who's on the short list? It's, it's never going to be anyone we expect, okay? So, Turbo. Turbo. Turbo's no gonna way. pull out the first one and he's gonna be the smuggest human being on the planet. Uh, Turbo's been inspired by Ferris' recent no air roll gameplay. I think he's unbound his own air roll button as well. Boy, overtime over here in game number one. And what could be a huge momentum swing, especially for Rogue. They have dropped their two goal leads. To go on to lose this would hurt so much. Uh -oh. but Flakes and Greasy. Uh -oh. In video position, Kronovi goes for the bump of Mognus. Absolutely phenomenal to not only avoid the bump, but keeps it out of his own net. Yeah, there's one clean motion there. It might have been a better idea for AJ to slow down the dribble a bit because he arrived too soon. And that allowed Mognus to jump over the bump and make contact with the ball at the same time. It's going to be up. AJ comes in over the top for the double! Saved at the last moment by Flakes! Brilliant stuff on the goal line by Flakes. Really tense game one. It's end to end all of a sudden after complexity just dominated. Rogue right into their own half for the majority of the game. Still no goals. He's best of five for the entirety of today. But it's so important that you get off to a good start in a close matchup like this. Especially as these OTs get longer and longer. We've heard players say before how oh! they are! Patrick Hero AJ! AJ just too fast, too powerful. He dominates the 50 50 and he's right back into the play. Greasy. Couldn't get there in time, but that's not something you see every day. Phenomenal start. The question now becomes, can you do that two more times, AJ? I wonder if you can. That is... That's what Sis should be telling them right now. Just give the ball to AJ. Kronovi, wonder, you've got one job here. Just pass the little man on the right-hand side of the stage to the ball and let this him do his thing. This is sound alarmingly familiar. A little man pulling out big plays. I mean, it works, especially right now. It's flavor of the month. Just you, you just line your players up in person and see who's, you know, the smallest person in height and then just give them the ball. Let them do things like this. That is just absolutely ridiculous. What a way to introduce yourself to the series. 
Oh, Greasy's got to make contact there. You, you have to say, you know, you can't let the ball go right through you like that if you're Greasy in that position. There was a few times, especially defensively, where it just seems like Complexity don't quite know where they want to be. And by the time they get in there, they're getting beat to the ball. It feels like the rotation needs to be a little bit more full in a way because they're being forced to scramble back. And by then, you know, you've got to scramble back and then make your move towards the ball end. You're not in a good spot. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. So it's all about AJ right now. Now, if he does have an off game, because, I mean, you're referring to Shaw set there, making a parallel with uh, the Wonder Kid, perhaps best player in the world at the moment for reciprocity. I think I got that right. But uh, he has off games, you know, he carries some games, he's scoring incredible goals, in other games he's not really doing too much, so let's see if AJ has a similar sort of effect for Rogue in this series, or can he just play an absolute blinder three games in a row? Well, we already saw Kronovi go for a very similar play to start us off here. Have Rogue noticed a weakness? in complexity because they are coming out of those challenging wall, uh, air dribbles very well every single time. Mm. When you do it and you get the challenge on that goal line, all you have to do is win it. The ball does the rest of the work for you. The complexity continue to, d they dive in pretty high on most of their challenges, so mind games are working out for Rogue. There's another just straight away maneuver from Magnus. He's immediately up into the air and trying to get a block and it's not gonna work out. AJ collects the ball in the midfield. Makes it 1-0 for Rogue again. Just not good enough by complexity. As they try and clear the ball, maybe a low boost play for Flakes there because he was really lunging for that one. And you wouldn't expect that from a player who's so composed and so um, defensive with his, uh, with his own positioning for the most part. Once again, they take it to the air. Rogue have picked their spot right now to try and punish complexity. And it's going to be up to Complexity to try and figure something out, although AJ makes his first mistake of the series. Almost handing away a goal immediately to Complexity. I don't think Magnus is ready for the miss to come right to him there. It's often the case in high-level Rocket League. Everybody's expecting hits on the ball. You never expect the, the clean whiff. The ball rolls through and you're just not prepared for it. Magnus opting not to hit that towards the back wall. Greasy one unable to make a touch on it. This is great for Rogue because they're not really receiving too much pressure from Complexity. Yes, the ball's in their half, but they're able to handle every single shot fairly easily. It's when you get into these sort of games where... I, 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 I'd say it for me at the very least. I'm not going to speak to you here, but it looks like Complexity are underperforming in a way that... You know, you start to look for some of those off-season troubles, oh, although that's going to be you go. slide right down the middle by Magnus. You know, you sort of wonder if Complexity are going to be able to hold it together throughout this. Yeah, it looks like uh, Rogue's defensive rotation was not really in time there. The two players heading back at the same uh, moment, just different sides of the field, neither one of them quick enough. That's a lapse of concentration for Rogue. Complexity will punish. Missed a couple of open nets this series, so... I don't know what this is right now. Where did they got that one? Grenoble comes in for the challenge. He's far too late. Wonder scooping it over to the far side of the field. Flex, he did hold on to quite a decent amount of offensive pressure last time, but... weren't able to do anything against these stabbing attacks from Rogue. Once again, Flakes is his third dribble of the game. It's a decent amount of distance on it. At least he's moved his team to the other side of the field. As Kronobi takes all the time in the world, does not get the flick he was after. Invites plenty of space for Greasy. Doesn't get the double tap, will not matter. Magnus has got his second. Yeah, good pressure here by Greasy Meister. Despite following that touch or making it look like he's going to follow that initial touch, he causes Kronobi to hesitate on the back wall. And then when Kronobi's got two things to think about, is, is Greasy going to hit that again? Is he going to get the double? Is he going to miss that? Does he even have boost? You know, that's making it much harder for him to play correctly and to position himself effectively. 2-1-2 two, two, complexity. I was impressed though by what I saw with uh, the way Rogue shut down Flake's previous dribble. They didn't send their third man for a, a lunging challenge. They instead just ball chase with their recovering player. Get the pressure from behind. That's a much safer way to shut down a player like Flakes who's so known for his ground plays. 
Blinks, when he does go for those dribbles, he wants to try and bait Rogue to want to continue their own offensive rotation. As soon as you do that, you get someone to dive in. That's an easy way past, and usually you've got enough time to maintain the dribble past another player. Right now, Rogue, you know, they're not sending the players who are already <laughs> back towards them, but there's plenty of bumps going on here. AJ looking for the setup. Still waiting for anybody on Rogue to really get there. They're all on the wrong side of the ball for a moment there. Nobody able to get the shot into the complex city goal line. Nice little recovery there by AJ, jumping well upside down, just get down faster. Great oh. pass, Greasy with a pre-jump save. Complexity hanging on to the one goal lead. Now Greasy to the corner, Kronovi does get the boost, that's going to limit Greasy's offense. This time a much better flick up, Kronovi has passed two. Couldn't quite land on the ceiling though. Wanted that recovery for the quicker route back to the ball. Still a minute left for Rogue to try and make something happen, and they are advancing in numbers. It's been all down to Magnus's defensive positioning so far. He has been ready to cut out every single oh play, but can he do anything about this one? Yes, he can, as there were players signed to fly towards him. 40 seconds on the clock. Rogue still after another. It's dunk by AJ. Nothing really coming off it, though. At least not yet. Wonder trying to flip onto the ball and get it under control, but complexity. Blew. They absolutely blast it clear thanks to Greasy. You can always count it in for that. Lovely clear from Greasy. Over to the corner. That's actually not going to be followed up on. There was a player there a second ago, but Complexity prioritized the defensive rotation. AJ, he's out of boost. Kronovi's touch will not be at all threatening as we head into the final few seconds. One to the corner. Greasy once again wins the challenge. If Complexity going to do this, they're going to go and defend oh. this last move. They will do it. <laughs> One each. A little bit uh, interesting at the end there as Flakes catches the ball, keeps it up on zero seconds, but they put it into the ground fairly safely. And in the end, it was a fairly comfortable win for Complexity. They didn't have too many scary situations at the end of that one. Rogue still trying to figure out their full team off offensive plays, it's, you know, apart from the AJ domination in game one. Been pretty quiet from them yeah. for the most part. It's not good. You want to see more from Kronovi. He had a great tournament at Beyond the Summit just a month ago. So far, he's not done too much um, against Complexity. One thing I do really want to compliment Complexity for in this game is just how much more patient they were when it came to building up that offense. Because last game, it sort of... They wanted goals and they wanted them immediately, and that's what left them available to being air dribbled on. But this time around, it was a much slower pace. Rogue won willing or able, whichever one it was, to go and challenge the midfield. And they recognized that, took control of two mid-boosts, and just slowly picked apart until they had a space to shoot into. Coach Sizz not happy with the performance in the last game, no doubt. So what, it's interesting here, Sizz is taking this standing option, Snasky. Much more I, lazy, he's just sitting down. I don't know like how any coach is ever looking, sit down. He's looking right into the back of, uh, of Magnus's chair. <laughs> I think you got a pretty good view there of all the monitors, Snasky. You can see him in every single per player camera there. Just, just look at that in the Magnus cam, he's sneaking his view round the back <laughs> to keep an eye on it. Oh, that's one nil wonder gets in the score sheet. Maybe more boost problems in defense for Flakes, because yeah, he was waiting on the 100 pad. I don't think it spawned. Let's look at it. He tries to get across, wasn't able to get there in time. Punished for waiting on that 100. Hoping it would spawn. Just one of those situations. There's no danger until there is. Well said. Oh, and fl <laughs> flying past it. Kronovi. No until they score. Drops it down. That's oh, going to be too nice. It's not Greasy Meister with a miraculous save. How has he managed to keep this ball out of the net? A couple of Phenomenal saves by Greasy this series already. I think Greasy's going to slow down the play. Wants to give everybody in his team a little bit of time to spread out because they're all stuck in one spot there. Flakes of the whiff. That's 2 0. Kronovi just puts it underneath the bar. But what's going on in defense for Flakes this game? Not even close to making contact. He's obviously aware that Rogue are going to be up pretty quick and he has to match their speed with some of his own, but you want to hit the ball. That would help. An abysmal start to game three for complexity. As their star player as well, he's usually so solid. One of the best defensive players in the game. Absolutely world-renowned for his goalkeeping and positioning, but you'll want to forget about this game 
pretty quickly. That's a lot better from complexity, though. Greasy and Magnus combined for a goal. But once again, this has been a consistent problem for Rogue throughout this series. Yes, complexity have had their own issues, but Rogue, a lot of their clears and a lot of their saves seem to either go towards the midfield or just sort of dribble around their box area. They're not pushing it to the corner. They're not able to get secondary touches a lot of the Wonder. time. Although Wonder! Wonder! Wonder underneath! And who needs to be able to defend to the corner when you can just keep on scoring? Where on earth is the defense for complexity? It's Flakes creeping up a bit too far up, uh, right behind Greasy. I don't know, was he just rotating back from the, from the kickoff perhaps, but really well done by Wonder to land on that ball. He was in a bit of space, but he still had to shoot with that touch or there would have been a defender coming in to clear it. 3-1 to Rogue. It's the better kickoff by the looks of things. They had more coverage, they were more prepared for that particular bounce. Ball goes to the corner. Couldn't quite get his second touch, but that makes it kind of awkward for AJ. We're only played one and a half minutes here, where it feels like it's been much longer. So Mongolus tries to keep the pressure going. Here's Flakes. Pops it up. That was way too heavy of a first touch. Gives Kronovi ample time. The fact that he's hit that ball forward or chipped it forward so slowly makes me think he was going for a flip reset setup. If he was trying to rebound, I'm sure the first touch would have been a lot harder. Wonder's got his dodge. He uses it for the 50-50. Really showing up in game three, Wonder. I mean, that's the player that um, Gibbs was talking about on the desk before this. He didn't expect Wonder to have much of an impact. In fact, he's had a really, really important role, especially in this game three. Flakes, nice pop, actually. That's going to give it over to Greasy. Wonder is way secondary to that. Does offer enough of a target that Greasy was forced to play it around him. Risky plays the middle. Flakes again goes for the dribble. I think that might be a well that's been gone to a little bit too often here. Rogue, who haven't been often challenging in the midfield and now starting to get more and more comfortable doing so. It wasn't a terrible position for the dribble, but Rogue have been handling Flakes dribbles pretty well. So I mean, Flakes, of course, he's still confident in his own ability to score goals by himself, create pressure by himself. But Rogue haven't really looked weak against that kind of play. How on earth has this not gone in for Rogue? It's still I, off the post, um, it's still open for Kronovi, and eventually they score. That was just shot after shot. I wonder how many they actually got credited for there by the in-game scoreboard. Crow, if you hit the crossbar there. That would have been hilarious. That would have been Imagine amazing. Imagine if the bar comes into the ground and then bounces right up next to the wall where you can't score it. Well, it'll start to get into one of those situations, and we've all seen them, where you're just like, I, why would I even attack this right now? It's not... There is some sort of cosmic force that is going to make sure that this does not go in. Flakes? Did he get the flip reset? I don't think he quite did. It's like his touch was too heavy. He may have jumped off the ball while looking for a flip reset. Need to delay a little bit longer before uh, dodging. Yeah, it's been an off game for Flakes, certainly. And there have been question marks about complexity due to the Flakes. Um, you know, maybe let's change this roster situation that never ended up happening. You know, personally, I'm glad to see these three sticking together. I think that they have still got a lot more to go. Oh my, AJ with a double touch off his own post to frustrate complexity even more. Yeah, this could be a rough tournament for complexity if they don't get a win in this series. Going to drop over to Magnus. They've just got over a minute here. They need to get some sort of momentum on their side. Otherwise, this is going to be a match point for Rogue. When looking back to all the goals the complexity have conceded, a lot of them have been preventable. Very oh, an preventable. awful lot of them. I mean, we've got two defensive mistakes from Flakes. We've got... Oh, oh my goodness! Wonder in why. Time. It was a slower pitch shot, of course, but still, good accuracy by Greasy. I like that setup that he's gone for. It was so, it was so obvious, though. It's been slow, uh, so everybody knew it was coming. It's kind of hard to mask mm. one of those sort of plays where you're going for the pinch because well, well, there's not much else you can go for. These setups, I've seen the, you know, a couple of really obvious pinch shot setups, like the one that we just saw from Greasy. But then instead of pinching the ball, just don't pinch it, just continue dribbling it. Because when people see you setting up a pinch shot, they tend to just send their entire team running towards their goal, thinking of the worst possible scenario where the ball flies off at 150 miles an hour towards the net. So you can use it just to relieve some pressure with a, with a pinch shot mind game.
has got way more power than I think anybody on the field expected, but Rogue do take it. They're up to match point. And if they get this next one, then they will be moving on to day two. Should be huge for Rogue. The seeding is important um, for day one matchups at DreamHack, and day two as well. If you lose at all, you're allowed to lose once. This is double elimination, of course, so you're allowed to get one loss and still progress. But if you do lose and uh, then progress with that one loss on record, you will likely have a harder matchup on the following day. So this is really big. If Rogue go in as a first seed, I mean, the other first seeds so far from, um, from Group A and B, NRG, Team Repro uh, Reciprocity, Almost got it wrong there. <laughs> we better hope we don't cast them this weekend. Oh, pro, uh, yeah, I'm expecting them to make a deep run, so I'd be surprised if we don't, uh, don't cast them. I'm going to be staring it into the mirror tonight, just constantly repeating mm. it about a thousand times. Yeah, there's a, you know, you're in a good bunch there. Energy and Team uh, Reciprocity, both grand finalists of the last two Rocket League majors. Um, they're qualifying as first seeds. So now, if you qualify as a second seed, you're more likely to run into one of those guys in uh, tomorrow, uh, in the games tomorrow, if that's not what you want. You really don't want to have to play NRG or Team Reciprocity in your first game on day two. Not only that, but we've got an afterthought waiting. And that is a team that is, uh, can be very much a giant killer. A scary team, yeah. So afterthought, already in the lower bracket. They lost to Lotus, our South American participants, who we're going to be seeing on stream, I believe, fifth match of the day, this being the third. Um, yeah, I expected uh, Afterthought to win that match against Lotus, actually. I, I was uh, really surprised with how well Lotus were able to play. South America continually showing us again and again that they are really a LAN region. They show up and they're playing completely fearlessly against the best teams in the world. Well, their only problem that they ran into is that there were teams that they took on at the World Championships that knew how to deal mm. with that style of gameplay. But when you do come to these, the level is no longer the top four teams in either region. It's a little bit more varied, and mm. Lotus were able to take advantage of that and smother their opponents. Yeah. But I wouldn't be too, uh, you know, if you're an Afterthought fan, the Shock Sathy first killer roster definitely showing a lot of promise online. Um, if you are a fan of them, they'll be playing the winner of this to qualify for day two, the winner of this series. And I wouldn't count them out. You know, that loss against Lotus, although it was a 3-0, I think that they can still bounce back from that. They've already had a lower bracket sweeping win um, against Cultivate Gaming, eliminating Cultivate from the tournament. So could be and should be a tough match for the loser of Complexity Road, making it all the more important that you get the win in this series. Speaking of this series, we haven't had in goals just yet, a minute and a half in. Not complaining or anything, but I am going to say we did have four at this point during the last game. And so we were spoiled. I, I feel like my expectations have been uh, sort of taken too high for goals, and I need this you. game to sort of bring me back into the balance. Yeah, they've conditioned you to expect multiple goals, and now they're just not delivering. It's just disappointing. It just is. We want goals. Like, just miss the ball, Grease. No, oh, he's just hit the ball. He saved it. Whatever. All right, so we'll have to wait a little bit longer for a goal. I'm sure we'll get one at some point. That is the good thing about Rocket League, never a nil-nil. You don't get nil-nil draws. Ah, oh, that's nothing worse. Imagine watching a game for 90 minutes and then it's just a nil-nil draw. A B. And you, you go off home. Yeah. Not even one goal to witness. So you've been traveling for six hours just to go and watch the away. I think we've both got some, some oh, hidden yeah. venting we've got here. <laughs> <laughs> just another reason to watch Rocket League. But Rogue just needed one goal, potentially, to advance to day two. And what a huge win that would be. Out of, the, out of Rogue and Complexity, I would say I'm more worried about Complexity going down into losers. Although Rogue did lose to Afterthought in the NA qualifier for this very tournament, the fact that this is a LAN, I would give Rogue the advantage in that matchup. I heavily. legitimately, I would feel afraid for both of these teams. Oh yeah, definitely. I would feel afraid for, for both of them. But I feel more afraid for Complexity, given their current you know, situation with the roster change that didn't end up happening. It's always a little bit awkward when things like that go down. Yeah, you typically want to restart again with a lot of momentum. Pranovi, oh. for a block. It's going to go as far as Flakes, who tries to keep the pressure going. AJ now to the corner. He's unchallenged for the longest time, but nobody's around to put this one on target. And instead, Magnus couldn't get it past Pranovi. Another good block from him. Pranovi doing a very good job 
of trying to stave off pressure and get his team back into the right positions. Minute and a half. Complexity need this win. Oh. And it might not happen. Oh. Granavi just saved AJ's shot. Oh my goodness. I, you know, I don't think it was going to cross the line anytime soon, but it's still a little bit unfortunate to land in the way of that one. Roger looking more dominant at the moment, though. Complexity look nervous. That's another good save by Greasy, who continues to get some really big stops on the goal line for Complexity. AJ pushes it downfield, only as far as Flakes, who almost had the ball land on him. And now we switch sides. Complexity are the team with all of the momentum. They're the one with the offensive strategy. And what a pinch that is to try and get rid of it. Look how deep Complexity are sitting, though. They really do not want to concede. That is their main objective at the moment, it would seem. And Rogue are not making any mistakes in the midfield. No double commits coming in, and that's going to make it very difficult for Complexity to score on the counter-attack. That's a lot of space, though. Oh, not off the post. Nobody from Rogue thought that was going in. Very brave from them. It's another pop-up. Greasy tries to pull his team in. They've won another challenge. Wonder to the corner. As far as Flakes, though, they There's need to no boost on Rogue. soon. Because that shot's going to go on target, and AJ can just kind of push it away. But Rogue have looked susceptible in this very position. And they're going to be happy to see that one go away. Yeah, they just had no boost there. All three members moving around slowly. Weren't able to get a big clear. Now they've found one. Boost is back under their control. AJ stops it on the goal line. The entirety of complexity is there to make sure it doesn't cross the line. Overtime is just moments away. There it is. One goal separates Rogue from day two. Complexity need to score to stay in the upper bracket. Like we said, this is a potential statement. Kronovi caught that at a very weird angle. I think he was like as at the bottom of that ball as he possibly could have been. That's what I was going to say. He's right underneath it. Not where you want to be if you continue to, if you want to get a flick onto it. The wonders missed. It's Greasy moving forward. And he's put it a bit high and also wide. I think he was expecting that ball to bounce out to him past multiple players. Rogue might have a little bit of an issue here. See everybody driving around looking for small boost pads. Let's see if they can break out of their half again. Look how deep complexity you're sitting though. They're really not trying to box in Rogue at all. They're just waiting for their turn to hit the ball and then attacking one time and then going back to their half again. Yeah, it's sign of a team that aren't quite used to the high pressure just yet. AJ tries to find Wanda, taps it on, that's going to drop down awkwardly! Oh. And AJ will finish it off! Rogue are heading to day two. And they have been the better team today, there's no question about that. Flakes dominated on the goal line by AJ. And that actually sums up this series pretty well. It was AJ popping off to give Rogue the great start, one game lead, and Flakes didn't really show up for complexity. It's a disappointing series for him. They're not out just yet. They'll be playing Afterthought in the lower bracket um, today. And if they win or that, will advance to day two as one of the second seeds of Group B. What a great win this is for Rogue. A statement that they are still one of the top teams over in North America and potentially the world. As we're going to be hearing more about this when we come back from a commercial break.